designing an insulation system so we never have to lose Frosty again. Good luck, now let's get started. All right, here's a list of all the materials you will need. Two plastic cups, two paper cups, one foot of duct tape, five cotton balls, one foot of the tinfoil roll, two sheets of paper, scissors, sharpie, ice snow, a ruler, and any other household items you can think of. Okay guys, now that you know what materials you have available to you, let's just wait and think a second. What do you guys think makes the best insulators out there? Is it snow? Is it aluminum foil? Is it styrofoam? What do you guys think? And then, after you guys have thought about that for a little bit, right below that there's a little drawing. I want you guys to draw what you think the best insulator would be out of the supplies that we have given you. Pause the video now and answer the questions. Alright, now take some time to assemble your insulation system. Here you can see Sarah and Nathan working on assembling theirs. you've assembled your insulation system, let's think. How much water do you think will be in the cup after 15 minutes? What materials were used the most and the least out of you and anyone who you're doing this project with? Take a second and write your answers down on the worksheet. Now go grab some ice or snow if you're in Minnesota to fill your cup with and wait for it to melt. This should take about 15 minutes, but if you want to see more dramatic effects, you can wait longer, about 30 to 45 minutes, or use a heat source on your insulation system. How high was your water level after 15 minutes? Was it higher or lower than the other group? Also, did you use the same materials, or what did you use the most of? Take a minute and think about these questions and write it down on your worksheet. Here you can see Sarah and Nathan pouring out the melted ice from their cup to see how much water melted during the 15 minutes. Okay, now that your water is in the cup, you're going to take your marker and you're going to mark how high the water is in the cup. And then you're going to take the ruler and measure how far the line is from the bottom of the cup. The more water that you have left in the cup, the higher the water level will be. Okay guys, so who had the higher water level? I did. What does that mean? I win! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Sarah over here, she saved Frosty, that's what it means. Woo! <laughs> but they all did a great job. <laughs> okay guys. Now that you've done the experiment and you've measured your water level, what material do you think helped the most comparing among everybody else? And then after you've decided that, you guys can draw another insulator that you want to make. And then if you have time later, you can go home and make another one yourselves. Thank you all for saving Frosty! Now Liz will tell you a little bit more about the science behind this experiment. There are three main topics that are applicable in this experiment, conductors and insulators, composite materials, and heat transfer. 
Now, starting with the first topic listed, conductors and insulators. So here I am going to draw a metallic network, which is essentially just a zoomed in picture of the atoms that you would see in any metal. So metals are special and they have a specific type of bonding called metallic bonding. Now, metallic bonding is much different than covalent bonding. In covalent bonding, there is the sharing of electrons. However, in metallic bonding, there is a seal of electrons within these atoms. These electrons release heat, which in turn make metals good conductors. But what about bad conductors? So a really good example of a bad conductor is plastics. So plastics, they do not have metallic bonding. They actually have covalent bonding, which was just previously talked about, in which there is the sharing of electrons, whether that sharing is even or uneven. So plastics, unlike metals, are not able to release heat. This in turn makes them bad conductors. However, they are also really good insulators, which means that they are able to keep heat from coming in or leaving. So on to the second topic, composite materials. So what are composite materials? Composite materials are essentially multiple materials that are combined in order to make their properties very similar. So a really good example of this is combining metals and plastics. So as talked about before, plastics are really good insulators. So if you combine plastic and metal, you're gonna get a mix of properties, which is a composite material. So these properties in turn would be a, a worse conductor than a pure metal, but a better conductor than a plastic. So onto the third topic, heat transfer. So if you had a really hot fire, you would have heat escaping, right? So where does this heat wanna go? it wants to go where there is less heat, which, for example, if you put some ice cubes near it, you know that these ice cubes would melt. And this is a perfect example of heat transfer. Heat wants to go from high energy, which is where the heat is or the fire is, to low energy, which is the ice cubes, which is what makes them melt. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned a lot today.